Hello, good evening, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Samuel. Uh, we're going to start um, our webinar tonight. And before we begin, I want to give you an overview about um, the syllabus. Um, last week, um, we could not be communicating because there was some issue with the computer and the program. I'm very happy that we can communicate today and uh, the program started. Um, right here, the syllabus is uh, a medical a medical uh, physiology. The course here, the, the course description. We're going to do the basic physiology as we're moving along. Uh, the first chapter of physiology, the book required that I'm going to focus on is the guide on physiology and some uh, of the component of APR reveal from uh, Margaret Hill. Attendance is mandatory in this class with, with the syllabus already. When you're here, you're supposed to pay attention. You can ask questions by raising your hand in the webinar. Um, evaluation at the end of the semester, we're going to have a, for those of you who are taking uh, the class for credit, you will have the opportunity to uh, take an exam to have credit for it. And um, academic honesty, you can read this part here. And this is the schedule we're going to attempt to do. So the first chapter is going to be the functional organization of the human body, um, control of the internal environment. We're going to talk also about the cell and its function. Very important chapter, chapter two. In chapter three, we're going to talk about genetic control of protein cell function and cell reproduction. And uh, chapter four, the rest of the schedule will be followed. Uh, remember, the most important thing is to work in the basic physiology. If you have any question about the class, if you don't have a chance to ask me a question during the class, you can email me. Here's my email address. is usat.sainville at gmail.com. When you email me, allow me about 24 hours to respond to your email. Because uh, I have other uh, things that I'm going to do. So I think everybody is okay with the syllabus. So we can go ahead and start the class. There's a chat bottom here. We can type some of the questions. I used to open uh, the button for people to speak, but sometimes people have dog in the background, they have other things in the background that making other sounds. So uh, we communicate by email or by chatting. So in order to make the process easier for everybody. All right, the first chapter we're going to deal with is uh, chapter one, it's talk about the basics. It's some of the things that you know already, but I want to go deeper into them and make the connection to how he relate uh, to medicine. Right here. We have um, the human physiology. Um, this is the beginning here. The science that is a concern with the function of living organism and its part, and of the physical and chemical process involved. That's the human physiology. One of the things you hear people always talk about when it comes to the USMLE, they are telling you that uh, the USMLE is mostly physiology and biochem. Why is that? Physiology is study the normal. If you really understand the normal, it will be very easy for you to understand the abnormal. So that's what you always want to focus on the physio. Now, look at here. Pathophysiology, pathos means disease. The study of discovers body function like disease. The basis of clinical medicine. That's why it's so important to know physiology. The one thing we need to know as we go in Elon and physio is the level, the structure of hierarchy of organization. The way I look at it, anything in life that you want to know, you always want to make some correlation. It's to type thing you already know so you can better understand it. The correlation that I make here, let's go over right here, is to use money. If you have to use money to correlate to the basis of the hierarchy of life, this is how I do it. Think about one cent. One cent, one penny, will be equal to atom. 
Five cents. We be ego do. Moleka. Ten cents will be correspond to the macro molecule. Macro mean big. Macro molecule. And you have it. Fifty cents will be correspond to organelle. The organelle. And uh, the dollar is the monetary unit in the USA. The, the smallest paper money you can find in America is one dollar. So one dollar will be the same as the unit of life. What is the unit of life? It's the cell. Very important. Why is the cell so important? If you do not understand the cell, you cannot understand the structure that makes the cell. What are the structure that make the cell? After the cell, you have two dollars, two or more dollars. Would be correspond to two or more cells. That is the tissue. And five dollars, the money that we are going along. Would be correspond more than one tissue give you a gun. And ten dollars, that's more than five dollars. More than one organ give you organ system. And more than one organ system will correspond to the twenty dollar for you to see the unit will be organism. Why is this thing so important for you to understand? If you do not understand the cell, can you understand the tissue? No, because the tissue is made of more than more than one cell. If you don't understand the tissue, can you understand the organ? No. The organ is made of more than one tissue. If you don't understand the organ, can you understand the organ system? No. And if you don't understand the organ system, you cannot understand the organism. That's how we do the year actually of it. One of the things I usually ask students, look at the list here. What is the difference between organ and organelle? Which one is bigger? The organ is bigger than the organelle. So the organelle represents 50 cents. The organ represents $5. So make that connection. It will be able to understand it. Let's go to something here, for example. If I go back to um, to the power plant, right here. Back to the power plant, look at it. Atom, molecule, macromolecule, organelle, cell, tissue, organ, organ system, and organism. If I give you an example, the dog in your house, is it an organ or organ, organism? It will be an organism. You have to make that connection to be able to make the correlation. Look at the baby here. That's an organism. If you think about the system, the, uh, the, the liver, the stomach, the small and large intestine, that will be the digestive system. What about blood? What is blood? Is blood a cell? Is it a liquid or is it a tissue? What do you think about blood? That's why it confuses a lot of people when they come to those things. Because you have to make the connection. What do you have in blood? You have red blood cell, white blood cell, platelet, you have albumin and all those things on it. So because you have more than one cell in the blood, how do you describe blood? Is blood a liquid or a tissue? Blood is a tissue because you have more than one cell. That's why if you ever listen to forensic files, and all those things, uh, uh, ghost anatomy, you always refer to blood tissue. It's the importance of it to see the hierarchy of life. The cell, like I tell you before, is a basic structure and function unit. The body composed of 100 trillion of cells. You have the tissue we talked about already, muscle tissue, blood tissue, epithelial tissue, nervous tissue, organs like the kidney, the heart, the liver, the pancreas, organ system, and general cardiovascular system, urinary system. Population and integration exist in all levels of organization. The cell and general gene, the peron, the pressure, the prescription, the factor membrane, the tissue, look at it here. The tissue here. 
over here is um autocoid we have over here look at the, um, the organ system the nervous endocrine system homostasis what is homostasis you don't want to just memorize a definition you need to be able to understand what you're talking about what is a tissue what is a, the what is homostasis homostasis is the maintenance of a stable milieu interior to keep things to be stable it was discovered by claude bernard in 1813 and 1878 that's how he died how do we explain homostasis this is how you explain it to understand it in real life and real terms for example you have uh, right here you come here let's go uh, let's enjoy it for you and you come here and a cup of a cup of coffee here the cup of coffee will be at 100 degrees Celsius right this is a human I'm drawing an example for you I never claim to be an artist so you see the human here what is the normal body temperature of that human 37 degrees Celsius or if you were to say degree Fahrenheit here we are 98.6 degree Fahrenheit you have to understand the unit between Celsius and Fahrenheit that's another thing we can discuss later, discuss later on the coffee is hot you come to the room the room the room temperature room room temperature is about 25 degrees Celsius 25 what happened when you and that cup of coffee sit down here what about an hour what happened after an hour after one hour the cup of coffee go down to room temperature it go down to 25 degree celsius all right what about your body does your temperature go down no what keep your body to stay at a constant temperature the internal milieu is what we call homeostasis right here homeostasis it's maintaining the internal milieu body temperature can that internal milieu be disturbed? Yeah. So what keep you with that internal milieu? There are the enzymes in your body. What are the enzymes? All enzymes are made of protein. The enzymes in your body that keep that internal milieu that are made of protein. All enzymes are made of protein, but that doesn't mean all protein are enzymes. You remember that, right? That's the protein in your body. So what happened now to that protein? Think about it. Let's go to another picture. Egg is a protein. Right? You have your egg. What happened if you break your egg? You put it uh, naturally in nature. In nature. The egg will be liquid. Be liquid in nature. What happens if you put heat into the egg? You put heat on it, you cook it. It becomes solid. Remember, we say the word nature, right? It's the same as we if we say the word compose. What does compose mean? Putting things together, you see? That's why you're using the word to see this is the, what it means for you. What about if I put the word D? Let's put the word D right here. D and we say compose. What is decompose mean? You break it apart. You remove the composition of it, right? The same as here. Whenever you get here, you take the egg from liquid, it was in nature, you put it solid. What do you do? You D nature D nature the egg you move the natural state of the egg remember in that case what will move the natural state of the egg is the heat egg is protein right the same as in your body here remember we talk about here all protein are enzymes that cause your body to maintain homeostasis to maintain a constant internal temperature what happens if you are go outside and play in the sun 
my body become be hot, too hot. What can happen to the protein in my, in my body? They can become denatured right here. You denature the protein in your body. When you denature them, you can break down homeostasis. Can that kill you? Yeah. What other thing that can break down the natural state in your body, that can break down the protein in your body? Cool temperature. When you when mommy buy the egg, observe what she's doing. Does she put the egg in the freezer or in the refrigerator? She put the egg in the refrigerator. Because if you freeze your egg, that is a protein. When you let it go back to liquid, it's going to denature the protein, the natural state of the protein, and the protein will not be able to work normally. Other thing that can uh, reverse homeostasis uh, in your body, we're talking about acid. You know, acid can do that too. Because of what? Because of, if you put an acid into the protein, like you put vinegar and egg, it can denature the protein in your body. When it comes to the human body, when you think about acid in your body, we're going to see that chemical reaction that uh, interfere with uh, your body. If you're not breathing, it's going to increase carbon dioxide and cause you to have so much acid in your body. We're going to get to the sex later on. Let's keep on moving. Right here, the general organization, you have the lung, the organization of circulatory system here. You can look at it. Look at the arterial, how the blood will be going, and how we're going to pull fluid in and out of this cell. We're going to discuss that further. Negative feedback mechanism promote stability. Negative feedback mechanism. You need to know this concept. The feedback forward. Anticipate change in the body. You have the positive feedback mechanism. And the positive feedback mechanism will promote a change in one direction. It causes instability, disease. How do you further explain it? This is what happened here. This is a negative feedback mechanism. You have the hypothalamus. Produce the toxin releasing hormone, TRH. For those of you who were here when we did uh, the uh, um, the endocrine system, you remember we talk about those hormones. We're going to get back to the system again as we're moving along um, uh, at uh, St. Pete and uh, Miami. We're going to find those connection again. Look at here. We have uh, the toxin stimulating releasing hormone. Go to the anterior pituitary because the anterior pituitary to release TSH, the toxin stimulating hormone. The toxin stimulating hormone force the thyroid gland to release T3 and T4. When your body has enough T3 and T4, the same T3 and T4 go to the hypothalamus and go to the anterior pituitary and shut it down. That's what I call a negative feedback mechanism. Is this thing? Let me give you an example in your house. Look at this thing here. This is a toilet bowl in your house. Right? You have the handle here that you flush the toilet. When you flush the toilet, right here, you have, depending on the design, there's something here that causes water to drop down. Water. Water coming in the pipe here. But that pub here can be fitted with a balloon or with something around it. Let we put a balloon here. When you flood the toilet, the balloon goes to go down, right? Now, as water coming down, the balloon rising up. When the balloon go to the horizontal line here, the level of the water shut down the uh, the water coming up, so the water will not overflow to flood the house. What kind of mechanism you think that play here in the toilet bowl? Is that a positive or negative feedback mechanism? It is a negative feedback mechanism because the same toilet bowl, the same water that rises up, shut down the water that coming out here. See the interaction here? That's what uh, we're talking about here. All right. What about in the positive feedback mechanism? In the positive feedback mechanism, everything goes to one direction. Is that you, uh, in the case of oxytocin, 
Let me show it to you here and the positive feedback mechanism. Oxytocin will come as the woman is pregnant. The more contraction that happens during the labor contraction, the more oxytocin comes until the baby gets out. Look at here an example of negative feedback mechanism and the other of the pressure, the heart rate, and the vasoconstriction. This is a negative feedback mechanism interaction again. Look at a uh, cardiopulmonary reflex, the feedback force control of the blood pressure. Feedback gain, you got a correction versus error. What are the feedback gain? An example of hemorrhage. Right here, as you see in the table here, I think should be going on. Now, then the positive feedback mechanism will more change. It changes in one direction, instability and disease. Look at it here. The more that comes, more will come until this, the process you're trying to reach finish. Hemorrhagic shock, positive feedback mechanism. You're going to release, uh, look at it here. The venous contraction, the blood pressure, until what you're going to try to accomplish finish. An action of positive feedback mechanism, cell depolarization. The sodium get into the cell, you go in. The cell membrane potential, that's a positive feedback mechanism. Look at what we we're talking before. In the case of oxytocin, the one labor. It's right here. The head of the fetus push a, and the head of the cell is here. That creates a reaction that causes the release of oxytocin. The nerve impulse from the cervix transmit to the brain. When stimulate the uterine gland to secrete oxytocin, oxytocin stimulates the uterine contraction and push the fetus toward the cervix. The more oxytocin that you release, the more will come until the baby get out. That's what you have here in the reaction in the case of positive feedback mechanism. That concludes uh, chapter one. Let's go to uh, chapter two. I send those uh, PowerPoint to you in the webinar and the uh, Google Doc. There's two set of PowerPoint for chapter two. There's section one and section two because the um, uh, the PowerPoint was too big to be sent in one part. Chapter two is one of the very interesting things you want to know. Now going deeper in the cellular physiology. Remember, as we said before, the cell is the unit of life. If you do not understand the cell, you cannot understand the tissue. The cell, the tissue is composed of more than one cell. If you do not understand the tissue, you cannot understand the organ. If you do not understand the organ, you cannot understand the uh, organism that is the human body. That's why you need to know everything about the cell. You have this nucleus and the cell. You have the nuclear membrane here. Uh, the cell membrane, we're going to talk about it. The position of the cell. Water. We have 70 to 85% of the cell is water. Iron. You have um, wa uh, a protein, about 10 to 20% of it. Remember, we're talking about in general. So it, does, it doesn't add up to 100%. The protein, 20, 10 to 20%. Lipid, about 2 to 90%. Uh, lipid and the cell. The carbohydrate one to six percent. Now, the membrane component. Look at this thing here. It's very important. The cell membrane is a barrier to water and water soluble substance organized in a bilayer of phospholipid. A bilayer of phospholipid. It's very important to understand. That's why you go start to understand real physiology. Why is it a bilayer of phospholipid? Look at this one here. The phospholipid, the head, it has a round head, right, and two tail. The head of the phospholipid is hydrophilic or hydrophobic. The head is hydrophilic. That thing you know already, but don't say, well, I know this thing already. Why are you talking about this one? Let's look at the organization. How do you understand it? How it relates to medicine. 
and the head the two tail are hydro phobic. So there's a lot of things we discuss them now. We're going to see why we're talking about them. What is what phobic mean? Fear, afraid. The so phobic mean is afraid of war. Fear of afraid of war. Fear. The salam afraid of water. Now, when you design the cell membrane, that's why we're talking about medicine now. How you design it? You go here, you put the nucleus, right here the DNA, and you do the cell membrane. Inside the cell you have water. Outside the cell you also have water. After driving. So if the cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer, how do you arrange, how do you get to that phospholipid bilayer? This is what you do. The head of the phospholipid is hydrophilic. That means you like water. That means you're going to have some of the head facing and they and the outside. You have here. So I have here. Outside, you have the phospholipid. You hear? Right here. Some of the head will be facing the inside because inside you have water too. That's why you have here. Right here. That's how the phospholipid works. So that's why you say the cell membrane is a barrier. It's a phospholipid bilayer. Bilayer I mean what? Two layer of the cell. Get in here. Now let's go here. You see the two layer here? The hydrophilic head, the hydrophobic tail. Why is this thing important for us to know? Because you have to know what can cause that bilayer to get in and what cannot cause the bilayer to get into the cell. Very important to make that understanding. Right here. The cell membrane. Impermeable to water soluble thing. By the way, let's go back to that water soluble thing. If you're talking about hydrophobic and hydrophilic, what is that mean? Let me give you some material and tell me if those materials are hydrophobic or hydrophilic. Let's go over it. Don't, you have to make life simple. That's what learning. You have to make correlation. For example, sugar. Is sugar hydrophobic or hydrophilic? You might ask yourself, why do you need to know that? Very important in medicine. Because sugar dissolves in water. When it dissolves in water, you don't see any two layers. That means sugar will be hydrophilic. So, sodium chloride. What is it? Hydrophobic or hydrophilic? It will be hydrophilic. Now, what happens if you take gasoline? Gasoline will be hydrophobic because when you put gasoline in water, you form two layers. That's what you have to look at it. There's two layers that form from gasoline. That's what is hydrophobic because it cannot mix with water to form one layer. What happens if we take uh, vodka, ethanol, vodka, or rum? Rum, when you mix it with water, how many layers you have? One layer. It will be hydrophilic. Hydrophilic is anything that can be mixed with water. That's what we're talking about. Very important to know that. Let's go back to what we're saying here. The substance that can cause the cell membrane. Impermeable means what? It cannot go to the cell membrane. Let's go to look at the cell membrane here. You see right here? If something is hydrophilic, like glucose, it gets to the cell membrane here, to that part of the hydrophilic. When it gets to the hydrophilic portion, it gets stuck in the oral portion. Can glucose cause the cell membrane and go in straight to the cell? No. So glucose is, will be impermeable when uh, that means it cannot cause the cell membrane. Water soluble substance like iron, glucose. Remember the word glucose here? Glucose and urea. Things that are permeable that can cause the cell membrane. Bad soluble substance like oxygen can cause the cell membrane. Carbon dioxide and alcohol. When you are alcohol, it only can cause the cell membrane because it's what? Small. There's two reasons that make something cause the membrane. You have to be hydrophobic, that means you have to be, be able to mix with oral, or you have to be small. That's the thing you relate to medicine as well. Why is this thing so important for medicine? Think about lithium. 
you take lithium as an antidepressant. Can a pregnant woman take lithium as medication? No, because the, the placenta is a membrane. Can that lithium cause the placenta and affect the baby? Yes, because lithium is very small. Think about alcohol. Can a pregnant woman uh, uh, drink alcohol? No, because the alcohol is very small. You will have to cause the placenta and affect the baby. That's what you have to understand. What can cause the cell membrane? Thing that can cause the cell membrane are things that are hydrophobic and small. So anything small and hydrophobic, you know it can easily cause the cell membrane. That's why when you drink alcohol, it can easily cause the blood brain barrier and get to your brain and make you drunk. So look at the interaction. I relate to the thing to medicine. Now, let's go here. Keep on moving. Look at the cell membrane here, the body of the phospholipid with protein embedded into it. What do we need those protein for in the cell membrane? The protein has a lot of important solvent. We have the integral protein. We have the cytoplasm. We have the inter intracellular protein, intra inside. We have the barrier. This is the barrier here. Look at the phospholipid here. Right here in the design. Look at it here. That's another design of the cell membrane. You need to know all the protein here and what they do. You have the receptor protein. What do we see in the word receptor? Receive. The receptor protein receive chemical here, like hormone, and send a message to and to the inside of the cell. Right? They bind to the chemical messenger such as hormone sent by other cell. And uh, the second one here, you have the enzyme protein, an enzyme break down a chemical messenger and terminate its effect on the tag itself. Look at this one here. You have a channel protein. What do we say in the channel here? It's like an English channel, like a passage. The channel can be closed and open. A channel protein that is a constantly open, allow the solute to pass and out, and out of the cell. Get a channel that open and close to allow the solute to only at a certain time. You have the cell mediate, uh, the cell identity marker. What is it identifies things that can be connected to your body, like if you're in a transplant. You have a cell adhesion that involves in connecting the two cells together. Remember, what can cause the cell membrane to get in? Right here. It's something that is hydrophobic and small. So if something is big or hydrophilic, can it cause the cell membrane here? No. How does this want to go to the cell? Anything that is big and hydrophilic is going to go to the cell through the channel protein to get in here. For example, sugar. When you eat, sugar get into your blood. How does sugar will get into your, inside the cell? Sugar has to get inside the cell by going to the channel protein here. But the problem is that, is the channel protein open all the time or closed and open? It is closed. What's going to open that channel protein for you? Is hormone and the body that will do that for you. For example, you got the hormone here that we call insulin. Insulin can be connected here, right? Insulin come here, connected here to the cell, we have insulin. Look at the word uh, insulin. There's two N on it. Put thing inside the cell. It's connected here, right, into the receptor. Send a signal to the cell membrane for the gate to be open and sugar can get in. So this is what happens when you eat, you drink orange juice, whatever you're drinking. You get the sugar that will be coming here. You get here. The sugar here. So you have insulin that will come, right? Connected to the, because you eat, there's a lot of blood. There's a lot of sugar in your blood. That sugar for it to open, to come in. The insulin coming from the pancreas, from the pedestal of the pancreas. Connected to the receptor protein. Send a signal for the gate to be open, so now sugar can get into the cell. That's normally what happened to you, what happened here, and the cell number. Normal, because sugar 
is hydrophilic and it's big. It cannot get straight to the cell membrane. It gets get stuck here. You have to go to the gate, to the channel protein. Normally, that's what happened to you. What happened now? If you eat this uh, and sugar gets into your blood, the insulin can connect it here, but that key doesn't work to open the gate here for the sugar to get in. Where all the sugar will be staying? They stay in your blood. And that's create that condition you call hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia. Too much glucose in the blood. When you have too much glucose in the blood, what disease that you have? The glucose gonna get into your cell. What disease you create in here? That's why you have diabetic. That's why the patient become diabetic. But remember, that diabetic, you have the insulin, but the insulin doesn't work. That's diabetic gap, that too. In some cases, people eat, sugar get into the blood, but there is no insulin at all. That diabetic, tap one. Remember this one. There's two types of diabetic. There's tap one and tap two. Now let, let's we're going to play a short video that explain you further about the diabetic and how it works. So that's the reason. You got to think that I know the cell membrane, I know the phospholipid bilayer, I know this, but if you don't know how to interact to understand the disease process, you really can memorize it, but you don't understand the concept. And that's what you're supposed to know. Now look at it, the protein. Protein specific to the membrane, defined by mode of association with the lipid bilayer. You have the integral protein, the pore, carrier, we talked about those protein already. The peripheral protein and the periphery. The intracellular signal in the mediator. The carbohydrate, look at this one, the glycoprotein, glycocalyx, majority of the integral protein here. The negative charge of the carbohydrate chain, we fail order, that's why the carbohydrate, the glucose cannot get into the cell. You have to go to the gate. Involved in the cell attachment interaction, play a role in the immune reaction. First of all, present in the membrane and various amount. Generally, decreased membrane um, fluidity and permeability, except in the plasma membrane. You have an increase in membrane flexibility and stability. Look at the symbol diffusion here. Let me think going down the constitution gradient. Lipid soluble molecule move readily across the cell membrane. Why is that? Lipid soluble mean they are hydrophobic or hydrophilic? Lipid soluble mean they are hydrophobic. Hydrophobic particle can easily cross the cell membrane. Water soluble substance cross via channel pore. That's what we're talking about. If you water soluble like glucose, you have to go to a membrane pore. You cannot cross the cell membrane. Very important to remember. Right here, this is a lipid soluble, cause the cell membrane easily. Right? But what happens if you water soluble? Look at the animation. The water soluble, the big, they have to go to a membrane. That's what happened here. Look at the uh, um, uh, the animation here. Let's go and play that video to show you what's going on here in diabetic mellitus. When I explain to you that how the cell membrane will be interact when you're dealing with people. During the digestive process, all of the foods that we eat, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, are converted into glucose, commonly known as blood sugar. A hormone called insulin is produced by the pancreas. Glucose is the food for our cells and circulates in our bloodstream. But our cells cannot absorb glucose alone. Insulin must first bind to the cell surface, which then activates the cells to absorb glucose. This is what this thing we're talking about here. Remember we're talking about insulin? That's the key here to uh, come to the receptor. Remember the cell membrane here. Look at this thing here. 
the lipid bilayer. This is the head of the phospholipid. This head is hydrophobic or hydrophilic. This is hydrophilic because as I hear, you have water and the cell membrane. If you have water here, it's too old. And inside here, you have water inside the cell. So that's why you have the phospholipid bilayer. Look at the organization. That's why it's important. The head here is hydrophilic. The head here is hydrophilic. What about the middle portion here of the cell? Look at the middle portion here. The middle portion here will be hydrophobic. So that's why not everything can cause the cell membrane. Only particles that are hydrophobic, like oil, can cause the cell membrane. Remember, I asked you that question. What is sugar? Is sugar hydrophobic or hydrophilic? Sugar is hydrophilic because sugar is dissolved in water. So that's why sugar cannot go straight to the cell membrane and come here. I get stuck here, they have to go to the gate. Insulin is the key, not open the gate for you. Let's keep on going. That process lowers our blood sugar level back to normal. In type 1 diabetes, the pancreas does not produce enough insulin, so glucose cannot refuel the cells. In type 2 diabetes, insulin is produced, but it doesn't work properly, so glucose is not consistently absorbed by the cell. Both have the same results. Glucose is not being absorbed by the cells. So that's why people who are diabetic have high blood sugar levels. Without the proper absorption of glucose out of our bloodstream, our cells are starving for food. You see the interaction that we're talking about. If you look at the video here, um, both of them, glucose, let me try to say it again. Okay. I'll two dots properly because have have this being cell. So that's why so that's why people well, you see right here? If you there's two cases of diabetes that like I explained to you before. That's all the interaction of the cell membrane. You don't just memorize the cell membrane, it's a phospholipid bilayer, you put in embedded to it, you have to apply to medicine. Look at this thing here. This is the key here. This is the glucose the insulin. Insulin come, open the gate, right? glucose to get in. What happens if you have the key? The key doesn't work. What kind of diabetic you have? Insulin independent diabetic. Because that diabetic is not dependent of insulin. That diabetic type 2. What happens if you don't have insulin at all? This is type 1. Insulin dependent diabetic mellitus. The way you remember it, let's say you have two kids. One is one years old and the other one is a two years old. Which one is more independent? The one years old or the two years old? The two years old case will be more independent. That's why type two is insulin independent and type one is insulin dependent. Okay, look at it. So whenever you're studying, whenever you're looking at physiology, you don't memorize physiology. You understand physiology how it works. So now I cannot you can understand the cell membrane. You understand how it works. You understand how it relates to diabetic mellitus. So that's how you do it. If somebody asks you about the cell membrane, because where well is the phospholipid barrier we put it embedded, but you're supposed to be able to know how to get in and out of the cell. We're going to discuss more of it as we move it along. This is a membrane. What can cause the membrane? Water, water, insoluble things, like things that are for hydrophobic, like oil, lipid can cause the cell membrane. What about things that are hydrophilic, like sugar? They cannot cause the cell membrane. They have to go to the gate. That's the understanding that I want you to get. That's the idea you want to get about how things work in medicine. Not to memorize things, but to, to get it. So when you're talking about, you know what you're talking about in a general term. Right, let's go to part two. Now that's what, that concludes chapter two, part one. We're going to do part two now. Now, part two, right here, you have it in Google though, talking about the cell and its function, clinical correlation of cystic fibrosis about the cell membrane, that's another thing you need to know, cystic fibrosis, I don't know the short video, but before we do it, let's keep on moving, then we'll go back to it, cystic fibrosis.
we do it uh, live with a short animation going to play in there. Look at this thing here. You have the, uh, the cell organelle. Organelle is all the component of the cell. The same as the human body. You have your eyes. What do you do with your eyes? You see. You have your nose. You smell. You have your mouth. You talk. You eat. Every little organ in the cell has a function. We need to know each of the organelles and what they do. If you understand what they do, so like look at the cell as a unit by itself, not working uh, around them. The endoplasmic reticulum is one of the organelles. Look at the definition for it. This is pure definition here. It is a network of tubular and flat vesicular structure. The membrane is similar to and continuous with the plasma membrane. The space inside the tubule is called the endoplasmic matrix, right here. There's two types of endoplasmic reticulum. There's a rough one. The rough one is the one that has the ribosome, very close to the uh, nuclear membrane. You have the rough, is a granular endoplasmic reticulum, right here, I can tell you. Outer membrane to first cover it by, with ribosome. Newly set aside protein because the ribosome set aside the protein for you. You know this definition extruded into the ER matrix. Protein are processed inside the matrix. The cross link, four link, of the glyco selated and linkage cleavage. Now you have the smooth ER, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, side of the lipid synthesis, the phospholipid cholesterol. The ground um, endoplasmic reticulum membrane but continuously forming the transport vesicle, most of which migrate to the Golgi apparatus. Right here, here. Now you have the Golgi apparatus. What does it do? The definition for it is a membrane continuously similar to that of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum membrane, composed of four and more stacked layer of flat vesicular structure. The purpose of it in the cell. You have uh, the, uh, what the, the Golgi will do, receive transport vesicles to transport them. It's like the post office of the cell that transport things around to break the package and do certain slide into them. Exocytosis, exo. What do you see in the word exo? In the word exit, cyto, cell. Cis is the process. Exocytosis is a process of the cell getting things out of the cell. Secondary vesicle diffuse through the cytosol and fuse the plasma membrane. The lysosome fuse with the internal endocytosis vesicle. Secretion, secretion, uh, secondary vesicle contain the protein. Synthesized in the wolf ear, bulb uh, from the Golgi apparatus. Use the plasma membrane to release the content. It constitutes the secretory that happens randomly. That's what happened in the uh, end of in the secretory vesicle here. Lysosome. The lysosome is very important. Let's talk about it. The lysosome, you have the phenocyte, the phagocytic vesicle. Phago means eating. Look at this one here. This, uh, you're getting to eat things inside it. So the lysosome. It's like the police officer of the cell. We destroy bad things. Vesicular organelle formed from the four vein Golgi. But then hydrolytic enzymes, acid uh, hydrolase. You have uh, phosphatase, nuclease, protease, lipid degrading enzyme, lysosome. They just flash the bacteria inside the cell to kill bad things. Used with pinocytotic and phagocytic vesicle to form the digestive um, vesicle right here now lysosomal storage disease what happens if you have problem with the lysosome absence of one or more hydrolytes you don't have it not set aside it's inactive not properly stored in the package that can result from lysosome become engorged with undigested material you cannot destroy those material anymore one of the examples of the disease we have is acid lipase A deficiency. You have eye cell disease, it's not specific. 
you have tay sac disease you're going to see that more in pathology okay? but all the lysosome storage disease rhodesism is similar physically to the lysosome they look alike but the two major difference is formed by cell replication and they contain oxidase the function of the proxism uh, it oxidizes substances they are alcohol that may be otherwise the poison of the body one of the part of the body that have a lot of proxism is the liver and the kidney because uh, the liver will break down alcohol and the secondary gland over here are going to grind them the mitochondria very big guy very important mitochondria the primary function extraction of energy from the nutrient two things that the mitochondria need to produce energy is oxygen and glucose remember that the two things that the mitochondria need to produce energy is oxygen and glucose what happens if you don't have any oxygen you cannot produce any mitochondria now because you don't have any oxygen the mitochondria cannot produce any ATP the sodium potassium bomb that need energy to work now cannot work you're going to see that later on again but you have to understand the concept the purpose of the mitochondria and why do you need oxygen and glucose for the mitochondria to work very very important and medicine that's the low energy state the low energy state is of something we talk about we're going to talk about all the time so that's what we kill someone when you can no longer get oxygen that means the mitochondria cannot put this ADP and everything will shut down you're going to see the cascade reaction I think will shut down what happens also if you're not going to get enough nutrients for those people who live in a country where they don't have enough nutrients what happened to them everything shutting down your low energy state because the mitochondria need two things to produce the ADP oxygen and glucose always remember that all right look at the nucleus the nucleus is a membrane bound organelle it's a double nuclear membrane right here and a matrix that continues with the endoplasmic reticulum that's why the work endoplasmic reticulum or the ribosome will be getting out to get to it uh, it's the center of the cell the control center of the cell the nuclear membrane is permeated by thousands of nuclear pores you see the nuclear pore here so, so the ribosome get out to go to the endoplasmic reticulum 100 nanometer in diameter functional diameters are nine close to nine nanometer selectively permeable to molecule up to about 44,000 a molecule away that's all of the uh, uh, biochemistry we're talking about this is the general cell the chromatin condense is found in the nucleosome one or more per nucleus is called in the RNA and the protein not membrane delimited the function to form the granular subunit of the ribosome look at the receptor mediated endocytosis endomenoid we're in time receptor mediated endocytosis is the ability of the cell to bring them inside without pinching before cutting the cell membrane when the second end the particle attached to the surface receptor concentrated in the chloride and feet remember this word here the receptor pied and endos and vaccination what they could be second end and also ATP dependent and involved recruiting of actin and myosin if something is ATP dependent that means you rely on which other organelle to work you rely on the mitochondria if you rely on the mitochondria what do you need in the mitochondria to put that ATP again oxygen and glucose to always go to back to the root of the thing that you need to make the connection to see how those things will be work now look at the digestive spinocytosis the figure lysosome we talked about before ADP production and the mitochondria step one you do that you're going to do more of that in the biochem we can have an overview of it here the carbohydrates are converted into glucose everything you eat is converted into glucose that glucose now the protein are converted into amino acid 
the fat are converted into fatty acid later on that go to the cycle to produce energy step two the glucose amino acid fatty acid produce into the acetyl coa you produce a maximum of 38 molecules of atp at the end of this process here we're going to see more of that in biochemistry so there's a review of it the use of ADP for similar function. What this cell use the ADP for? Look at it here. You have on the standard condition, delta G is only negative 7.3 kilocalories per mole. ADP concentration is close to 10 times that of ADP. The delta is about 12 kilocalories per mole. Use ADP for membrane transport. That's what we're talking about. You're going to see more of it when you do. The action potential, synthesis of chemical compound, mechanical work. So it's like you have your car. The fuel for your car is uh, gasoline. You start your car and it works. What happens if you don't have any energy? You don't put any gas in your car. You cannot produce energy. The car will not go anywhere. That's why the ADP, function of the ADP is so important. How do you? Stop the mitochondria from produce ADP. One of the organisms that very good and blocking the mitochondria from getting oxygen and cannot produce ADP is thionine. I saw those people, if you watch this movie, when they get somebody is working for, uh, we're doing some, um, some covert operation. If they don't want to talk, they take a cyanide pill. How long it take them to die? Two minutes will be dead. So, you cannot live without ADP. You cannot live without the mitochondria and be able to work to produce ADP. That's the reason. If somebody cannot uh, breathe, they cannot take oxygen. What happened to them after about five to ten minutes? After about two to three minutes, they pass out. Five to ten minutes, you'll be dead because your know, body can no longer produce ADP. You cannot support life without ADP. Adenosine. Triphosphate right here. The molecule you need, the energy you need to support your life. But it's so open to get oxygen. The most important thing in life is what? Oxygen. What is the second most important thing in life? Food. Uh, water. Sorry. The first thing is oxygen. Second, water. The third one, food. The fourth one, shelter. You see, your boyfriend or girlfriend is not on the list. You don't lie to people to say, well, I cannot live without you. So it's just a joke. <laughs> okay. So that's you have to see the thing important that you need to live. is oxygen, then water, then, uh, then food, then shelter. That's the thing you cannot live without it. Five to ten minutes without oxygen, you're gone. Burn there. Food, uh, water, you can live up to 15 days without water. But most people are about three to five days about water there, they're already dead. Food you can up, do up to 15 days. So that's how you have to see the important thing and thing in life. The cytoskeleton, cytomin, yeah. cytoskeleton, the skeleton of the cell. Right here, let's go over it. Comprised of cell specific fibula um, monomer. In general, you have the main thing, no filament. All the same here. Microtubule, the composition of it. You can just read this part here. You have the thin filament, the actin filament. We're going to talk more about um, uh, those, uh, those filament uh, when we talk about uh, the muscle. We're going to talk more about them. All right. Now, the thick filament, the mouse in, top one and top two. You have uh, the mouse in here. Together. With the supercellular locomotion and subcellular transport. Right here. Look at the structure of the um, cilia and flagella. Occur only on the inside of the surface of human airway and fallopian tube, the cilia. That's what you have it. And the uh, fallopian tube and the human airway. The cilia is there to move things, for movement. It move and the uh, in the airway, you're going to move the mucus. and the fallopian tube, you're going to move the egg and uh, the cilia with the cilia here. What happened? 
and the airway. How do you destroy your cilia and the airway? By smoking. So now when you smoke, you destroy the cilia. You can no longer move the mucus. That's why some pe people that are smokers, if they have a flu, if they have any anything, uh, they cannot remove the mucus to spit it out. That flu will last longer than uh, somebody who smoke than somebody who doesn't smoke. You have to understand that concept. So that's why we're trying to tell people in the medical field, tell them not to smoke because smoking is dangerous. Remember the cilia, the structure of the cilia is the same as the flagella. The flagella, each of them have a nine double tubule, two single tubule. Its cilium is an outgo and the basal body. Cilia movement is ADP dependent. You need energy to move those things in your body. Also require calcium and magnesium. I'm a, I'm a boy locomotion. How are you going to move things here? Um, traditional continual endocytosis at the tail of exocytosis at the leading edge of pseudo podium. Pseudo means false. You have a false teeth that move those things. The attachment of the other movement will be going on. Let's go back and uh, work in the cystic fibrosis as a disorder on the membrane. Right here. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease that alters the body's respiratory, digestive, and reproductive systems. Cystic fibrosis uh, is a of... genetic disease that alters the body's respiratory, digestive, and reproductive systems. It affects the body's epithelial cells that make up the lining of the lungs, pancreas, Cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease that alters the body's respiratory, digestive, and reproductive systems. It affects the body's epithelial cells that make up the lining of the lungs, pancreas, liver, sweat glands, digestive tract, and reproductive system. Normally, the epithelial cells release a slippery layer of mucus that captures dust and germs and acts as a lubricant. A person with cystic fibrosis inherited a gene that causes the epithelial cells to produce a defective protein. That protein leads to the formation of thick, sticky mucus, which causes many serious problems. It can clog the bronchial tubes, interfere with breathing, trap bacteria in the lungs, and interfere with digestion and absorption of nutrients, which can stunt growth and weight gain. Common symptoms of cystic fibrosis include very salty tasting skin, persistent coughing, poor weight gain, and bulky stools. The treatment of cystic fibrosis varies according to the stage of the disease and which organs are affected. We're going to talk more about cystic fibrosis because it's a recessive disorder. Is what we call it a recessive disorder. Thinking about it, when you do the Puna Square, if you have a big C, and little C, that means you are carrier for the gene. You are carrier here. If two people that are carrier get married and have a kid, what is the probability for one of the kids to have cystic fibrosis? That's how you do the Puna score. We're going to talk about it again when we're talking about genetics, the gene. You do the Puna score to see here. Look at here. You have one. Two, three, and four. If this is the man, big C, little C, for cystic fibrosis. This is the woman, big C, little C. The woman always desire like that when you don't put a square, and the man is like this one. For you to have cystic fibrosis, you have to need you need to have two of the recessive gene. So this person here, or those two, the buff carrier, right? In the case of cystic fibrosis, somebody who's going to be sick with the disease. You have small C, small C, to be sick.
So let's look at the Bruno square here. The first person here, the first kid here of the two people who get married will be uh, Big C, Big C. So it's just two here, we put together here. The second one will be Big C here from the mother, little C from the father. The third kid, Big C here from the father and little C from the mother. The fourth kid, little C, little C. So according to that Punnett square, how many of the kids will be sick? One, kids number four. But the way you do it, when I ask you for the percentage, what is the probability that one kid will be sick? You look at it as a term of a dollar. How many quarter you have in a dollar? Or quarter? If you take one quarter, one out of four, one quarter give you 25 cents. So the probability that one of the kids will have 65 or 6 will be 25 percent. That's the way you do it. When you're doing the, uh, the Punnett square. So we're going to talk about it some more. As we're moving along to the chapter, we're talking about genetics. We're going to see the combination, why, how one uh, case will be affected in the family. But remember, we see the probability. Because what is the probability when two people get married? They can have 10 kids, all of them will have this, uh, the same problem. Because it's a probability. There's a probability when you get married, you can have one baby boy, one baby girl. But you never see two people get married, they have 10 kids and all of them are boys. So that means that all the kids the person have can have cystic fibrosis or all the kids will not be affected by the disease. So that's why we're talking about probability. What is the, uh, you have to look at it that way when uh, you're looking at the gene. Ah, so um, this concludes chapter 2. So uh, let me, if you have any question, you can put it in the chat. I don't know how to, I was um, trying to uh, unmet the, 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 uh, the button so people can ask me any question. All uh, right, you have, uh, somebody have a question here. And Agnes, Annie Lebeji, what is the question? Hello? Hello? Do you have any question? Yes, I wanted to know uh, the end product of ATP is ADP, right? No, no, the, the process when you're doing it, you just have um, the, the, the only concept I want to tell you um, and, the, and the physiology of it, that you produce the ATP in the, micro, uh, in the mitochondrion. You need oxygen and glucose. When you get to biochemistry, you're going to go deeper and do and to go more onto the part of the reaction. Um, any, any other person have any other question? Hello? I'm okay. Okay, so so the end product is ADP, but the main concept I want you to take for now, thanks for tonight, is that you need oxygen, you need glucose to create the ATP and the mitochondria. Thank you. All right. Okay. And any other person have any other question? Hello? Okay, if you if nobody else have any question because there's a um, a key you can put the question so I can only at the bottom you can talk to me. Um, uh, the only person have uh, the question was uh, Agnes. Uh, we have another question here with uh, uh, Sami. Sami Amin. Hello, Sami. Hello. Sami. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. What's I have my question. My question is, if you turn whatever you write on the on the board, if you can put it on the dashboard that we can copy to give it like for reference here. Yeah. Are you talking about to give it uh, to take it to Google Doc? No, I mean like uh, you, you know where I wrote the question. You can put it there. Uh, you can copy and paste, and we can copy from what there. Are you, yeah. uh, you mean um, I don't understand? Uh, so whatever I'm writing here, can you see? You can see the writing, right? Yeah, I did see it, but okay. I mean, but I mean, if you can put it on the dashboard, we can copy it. Oh, you mean if I can so upload it, they if, 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 if I can upload yes, it in the Google Doc, right? Yes, please. Okay, I can. okay I, I'll ask Jeff and to uh, have them be able to do that for me. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, okay. you. thank you. Thank you. All right, Janelle. 
Yes. Yes. I had a hard time hearing you and seeing the video, but it's well, okay now. Oh, you, you, I don't know if it's a connection because everybody else can see it. So did you check anybody to check about the technicality of it? Yeah, I did, but it's okay now. Oh, you 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 find a way to fix it, right? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so on next Wednesday we're going to start at seven again. We're going to be chapter three. So I'll okay. talk to Jeff to see um, how, how can I work things out. Um, Kevin <laughs> Taylor. Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Hello. Yeah, Kevin. Yes, sir. Have no, I do not have a question. Oh, okay, because uh, it's sure that you have a question here. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any question? Because when you click in the question here, I can unmute you and you can talk to me. So not you don't have any interaction with the other student. All right. All right, if that aims, um, if that answer everybody else's question, so that concludes chapter two. Uh, it was a pleasure to come back to the webinar again. And next Thank Wednesday, you. we'll start with chapter two. Thank you very much.